we're going to ask her to take a, teach her how to ask for a break. Okay? Now, we're going to work on these other things. Don't get me wrong. But right now, the immediate replacement behavior is we're going to teach her to ask for a break. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's look at Jordan now. So she's on page 74, or he. And go ahead and, again, just the replacement behavior. Find, choose the best replacement behavior for Jordan using those three rules. You can talk, that's fine. Mm -hmm. more seconds to find the best answer just for the replacement behavior okay so Jordan quick review it's independent work is a problem so she asked to complete science worksheet she can actually actually accurately answer the questions on the worksheet and she actually reads it at a fifth grade level she's got some pretty good skills for a fourth grader, that's pretty good. Okay, we know what her problem behaviors are, and they get her adult attention. That's what the FBA says, so we're not gonna question that, okay? <laughs> but we are gonna look at what are the replacement behaviors for her, okay? So remember our rules, whoops, give you guys an answer in. <laughs> Respectfully ask peers for help. Did you guys say that one? No, because no, it's adult attention, so wouldn't result in that, right? Uh, wait to ask teacher questions after instruction or during breaks. Too long, right? Good, because remember that's the other piece, right? It needs to be as easy and get her what she needs, right? Uh, computer time is earned for completing work. No, but computers are great. You know, they're just great learning thing, right? No, good. Doesn't match the function. Raise hand and ask teacher for help. Yes, because it gets her that adult attention. So that's what we're going to teach her. And take a work break. Great, but she doesn't want that. She can actually do the work. She's a fifth grade reader, right? She wants teacher's attention. So we're going to teach her how to ask for help. OK? So once we've done the replacement behaviors, we've got to come up with a way to teach that. And we're not going to go into too much detail in this training, because we use good teaching methods to teach replacement behaviors, but we do need to teach them. So you need to have that in your plan, your behavior support plan, of how you're going to actually teach the student to use their PEX board or whatever it is that you're asking them to use. Okay? But your behavior support plan and the form that's provided guides you along to then write these in for your team to implement. Okay? So we teach the replacement behavior by, of course, identifying those skills to teach we always start with that replacement behavior because we want to break that chain. And then, of course, we also teach the desired behavior. We give her the math skills or the writing skills that they need. Okay? But we want to make sure we give them that replacement behavior first and make sure they're, they're understanding that that's what's going to pay off and we're going to teach the desired behavior when we got that behavior under control. Okay? So common mistake, don't assume the student has this replacement behavior in their skill set. Okay, because if they did, they might be using it already, but they're not. So we want to make sure we teach them and teach them this is how and when to ask for a break, especially if they, have, they don't have verbal skills. Okay, so you, of course, use that observable definition. You're going to model lead test, use good teaching strategies, and, of course, schedule and review and practice. So this next part is pretty easy because what we do is it's almost kind of like a pre-correct to make sure people do this is we go from this replacement behavior and say, what then are you going to teach? And it's a pretty obvious answer here, right? So we're going to teach, if for example, for Morgan in page 73, to, if we said the replacement behavior is to ask to take a break from writing, well, guess what we're going to teach? Teach her how to 
ask to take a break from writing. Now, it's a good time to think about, does that match the function, right? Is it easier or socially acceptable? So looking at your list there for Morgan's options, we can eliminate the first one, okay? Teach the student to ask for a large line paper, nope, right? Teach the student to ask teacher for a break is the one that we are gonna choose because that's what we selected. Make sense? Okay? And sometimes, and I'm doing this because people do this. They say they're replacing behavior and they go ahead and teach her how to use the line paper or something. Again, we wanna make sure that we're teaching the replacement behavior. So we encourage your teams to then teach what we've identified as the replacement behavior. All right? You wanna make sure that you provide, of course, frequent practice for her, pre-correction, so prompts for her to then ask for that break, okay? So for Jordan, I'm just gonna give you the answer because it's pretty obvious here. The alternate behavior is to raise her hand and ask for help and we need to teach her to respectfully ask her teacher for help. Make sense? Okay, make sure your teams come up with a teaching strategy for the replacement behavior as well, okay? So we talked about replacement behavior, now we're gonna move into antecedent strategies. Okay, we're gonna teach how are we gonna prevent these problem behaviors from recurring. So our two rules are right here, directly address the triggers, and of course has to match the function of behavior. So the reason why we did that functional behavior assessment is because that function is now gonna guide how we prevent the problem behavior, okay? So the rules that we're gonna apply is we're gonna change the antecedent, so what's triggering the problem behavior, so the student will no longer need to use that problem behavior, we're making it irrelevant, okay? So the, the rules that we're gonna apply here is one, it directly addresses that identified antecedent, okay? So it has to actually be related to that task, okay? And that it, of course, addresses the function of behavior, okay? So for example, if we've identified antecedent as asked to read aloud in class, okay, some good options that will directly address this is one, don't ask the student to read aloud in class because that directly addresses it. Give the student a passage in advance to practice pre-reading. Hey, in about 30 minutes, I'm gonna ask you to read this or 10 minutes or whatever. Let the student read one sentence directions they're familiar with instead of entire paragraphs from the text. So you see how these directly address reading aloud, right? Now, some non-examples, okay? The choice du jour, move that student closer to you. <laughs> Great idea, but does not address the task, right? Attend a counseling group about anger management, <laughs> so when you read out loud that you can talk about it, right? Again, not a bad idea, doesn't help us prevent it though, right? And that's something that I can do as a teacher, okay? Check in with the teacher before reading group. Good idea, good to make that personal connection, but it does not address the task. It didn't change reading aloud, didn't make it easier, right? So the idea is we wanna make sure that we directly address the antecedent. Common mistake teams make, but you guys are not gonna let them make it anymore, right? You can say, how does that directly address reading out loud, okay? And of course, why is function important here? Why do we need to think about the function when we're preventing problem behaviors? What's that? We need to make sure we're not reinforcing. Okay, good. And we're setting them up to use those replacement behaviors or whatever we're teaching. Good, okay. So of course, our antecedent interventions must address the function. Okay, so ask to read aloud in class. And if she's trying to avoid public presentation, so it's not about how hard it is, she can read almost with her eyes closed, right? Um, but it's more related to social anxiety. So we need to think about that when we're coming up with these strategies, okay? So think about this for, um, does this intervention address the function, okay? So do not ask the student to read aloud in class or respond publicly. Does that address the function, that social anxiety, right? Because it's not reading difficulty. Good idea. Give the student a passage in advance to practice pre-reading. Is that something we should really need to do for her? No, she's a fifth grade reader in fourth grade. So it's, remember, she doesn't like to be called out in class. So we're not gonna even build that in, right? 
whoops, sorry, let student read one sentence directions that are familiar with. Again, she can read pretty well, right? She could read all, everything on the page, okay? But the idea here, whoops, is and these would be two good options, but the idea of not asking to read aloud will definitely address that public presentation piece because she actually has the skills. Does that make sense? Okay, now if we could, we could work towards this, this would be the immediate answer I would go with, we could work towards giving her a passage in advance if we can really help her kind of regulate and think about, you're gonna read this, get ready, okay? But I would go with definitely working with this in the beginning and working towards then prompting her, okay? So if we're changing that antecedent, we can then prevent her need to engage in that negative behavior of throwing stuff on the ground and calling me lame, right? Okay, so we also teach the idea of setting events are play a role. They're things that are outside of our immediate environment. And so they may actually, that trigger me Divorced parents, being hungry, having a fight, number of things. Some things we actually can help with, right? If I know students come to class hungry, who I have some protein bars or whatever in my, in my uh, closet, right? Um, some other things I can't change, but I can then know that he got into a fight coming off the bus. I just, I won't say, go ahead and start writing that paragraph right now, okay? I will give him some time to deal with that fight and then make some small demands or whatever it is. But we need to think about those setting events when we look at coming up with our interventions, okay? And we kind of think of them as separating events. So we want to think of what are some activities that we can do to then help them get ready to do the tasks of the day or whatever the situation that you're getting them into, okay? So, for example, if setting event is conflict at home and student comes to school after a conflict, to build in a morning check-in, uh, meet with adult that he has a positive relationship with, do a fun activity with the student to turn the day around. I'm glad you're here. Let's play tic-tac-toe for a while. I'll let you win, right? So don't say that, but let him win, okay? Um, okay, let's do some antecedent interventions for Morgan based on what we talked about. Remember, directly addresses the antecedent and matches the function, okay? So you can choose two here. You have two options here from these five. And one of them has to do with the setting event. But go ahead and for Morgan, spend about 30 to 45 seconds looking at what are some antecedent strategies using these rules. Okay, go ahead. All right, you just want to see what we get from Morgan. Okay, remember the rules we're going to use. Does the intervention directly address the antecedent and the function of problem behavior? So we're going to give Morgan more time to complete the writing task. Is that some, one of the two? No. no. Okay. What about um, moving her seat to the back of the room to reduce disruption? No, it doesn't directly address the antecedents. Okay. And she would still have to do the work probably as well. Give the student high interest topics to write about. Why not? That's interesting, right? No, it doesn't directly address the antecedent, right? Task is too difficult. We need to somehow modify that guy, right? And so making it a more interesting topic, I still have to write a paragraph. That's too hard for me or her, right? Good. Have the student dictate answers instead of writing. Yes, we've changed now that writing task into a dictation task. 
So that's one way of preventing it. And avoid giving her writing tasks if she's already received some corrective feedback from you about her writing. Right, if we know she's already feeling bad about her writing, don't say, okay, go ahead and write another paragraph after you've gotten negative feedback, because that's a setting event for her. Make sense? So hopefully you chose those two, because you applied those rules. Now let's do the same thing for Jordan. Okay, so take some time. Choose two of those five. Remember, directly addressing the antecedent. Five to ten more seconds. All right. So let's take a look at Jordan. Okay. Remember our rules. Directly address the antecedent. Address the function. So here, teacher checks in the student on arrival. Good idea, you think? Okay. Have peers remind the student to pay attention and raise hand. Okay. Why, why yes or why no? Okay, good. For getting adult attention. Good. Teacher assigns student a job to assist her before independent work. Okay. Warn the student she will be sent to the office if she makes any negative comments. Have all materials ready for student upon arrival to class. Got some yeses, got some noes. Teacher checks in with the student on arrival because that gives her the attention, right? And teacher assigns student a job to assist her before independent work begins. See how this is actually addressing that independent work piece, okay? Um, having all materials ready, great idea. Should always do that anyway, right? But we definitely want to be direct, just like moving the kid close. Great, that's great. But we want to be d directly addressing the antecedent, okay? Good. So we know that the function guides the way we replace behaviors and of course the way that we prevent behaviors. Now of course, it definitely guides the way that we respond to behaviors, okay? So we've talked about replacing, we talked about antecedent strategies, now we're gonna talk about correcting the behaviors by quickly and effectively redirecting them to that replacement behavior, okay? We put a replacement behavior in place, we've taught them, but sometimes we need to put a prompt to remind them. And, so what we want to do is redirect them or prompt them to use that replacement behavior. So if we see that student getting ready to have that tantrum, getting ready to throw that paper on the ground, be like, remember, you can ask for a break anytime, right? Or get that PEX card right to them, right? Or whatever it is. So you want to be able to redirect the student to that replacement behavior, okay? And do this quickly. Um, yeah, so if the student raises their hand to request an easier substitute assignment in order to escape the difficult task, then of course, quickly provide the student with that easier assignment. Don't be like, hold on, keep on working, I'll be back in about five minutes to get you that assignment. No, we wanna make sure we deliver that right away, okay? And so that's a big piece to remember. People wanna go straight into, well, go to the office or some other strategy to correct them, but the best way that we can correct them is by prompting them to use that behavior they want to use anyway. Okay, so give them that card or that prompt to raise their hand, redirect them to the replacement behavior. We do definitely want to make sure that that problem behavior does not pay off. We want to extinguish that behavior by using what we call extinction strategies. So the way that we do this is, for example, if the function of problem behavior is to escape the task, make sure that when the student engages in problem behavior that they don't essentially escape that task. So the idea that timeout may not be effective, especially for a student that's trying to escape, but the idea of, you know, if they're gonna go through their repertoire of behaviors, okay, now we come back from recess, we're still gonna do that task, okay? So they didn't necessarily escape that, they kind of prolonged it, but they didn't escape it. Now in the meantime, of course, we're gonna be very proactive and we're gonna redirect them and say, ask for help, I wanna help you with that, buddy, okay? 
before they even get into that. So when you start to see some precursors of that problem behavior. But when they do engage in that problem behavior, don't just say, oh, okay, well, let me give you a coloring activity. Because, no, you're reinforcing the problem behavior. Okay? Does that make sense? So they're still going to have to do that task or whatever it is. Now, of course, your question is on the front end of, do I need to change that task? Maybe it's way too hard. Maybe it's way too long. So on the front end, I should have done a better job, maybe. But now, right now, what am I going to do? And I'm not going to let that problem behavior pay off. He or she's still going to have to do that after recess or whenever that is. Okay? So when we talk about <coughs> corrective or extinction strategies, and we're actually going to go to the far right-hand side here. We called it negative when we first designed it. And so what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we prompt. So one of the rules that we're going to choose is it needs to prompt the replacement behavior okay, at the earliest signs of behavior. And we also need to identify a response. So how are we going to respond to that problem behavior that doesn't reinforce it? Okay, so those are the two rules that we're going to use. So go to this last column here. Yours is correct and extinguish. And select two, four, on page 73, the far right hand, the correct and extinguish. We'll get to the reinforced one soon, but. the replacement and of course don't let that problem behavior pay off <coughs> and you have two options there Okay, so let's go through the options. Remember, prompt replacement and does not reinforce the problem behavior. So ignore the student misbehavior to prevent escalation. No, in fact, they're actually still getting the escape, right? Um, give the student a warning that they will be sent to the office if they don't get writing. No, gives them what they want, right? Have students stay in during recess to finish work with teacher help. I hear some mixed messages. Okay. Let's hold on to that one. And we'll talk about that one a little bit more. After student gets disrespectful, have him tell you the answers instead of writing. Big no. Tell me why. I don't want to reinforce that disrespectful. Yeah. Go ahead and some, call me some names and then let me go ahead and help you out. Because I just love that, right? No, we're not going to do that, OK? Now we're going to prompt them, right? And this is the last one, right? When the student begins refusing, you're going to prompt them. Hey, buddy, you can ask me respectfully. I'll help you out. Now, of course, I won't use that many words. I'll use my signal, right? And so those are the two that you should have chosen, OK? So he escapes, but he's kind of prolonged it. He's going to stay in and do it during recess anyway. And actually, we'll help him out. but. You know, I also need to think then on the front end, maybe my tasks are too hard, okay? And when the student begins refusing, prompt them to use that replacement behavior. Make sense? Good, now that you've done that one, let's turn over to Jordan and look at the correct and extinguish. Yes? Does it? I think if it was set up ahead of time, but I think if they're seeking attention from the teacher, then having them stay in during recess to do the writing is, and reinforcing. You're exactly right. And that's why Morgan is our escape maintained lady. So she doesn't really like to hang out with me, but she's going to have to come into recess and do that task with me. Does that make sense? So if she was attention maintained, one, that wouldn't be the issue, right? She, she wants to escape. She doesn't care about me. So she comes into recess, has to hang out with me. That's horrible, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. But now Jordan's a different guy. He does like adult attention. So let's do his correct and extinguish behaviors.
Let's take about 20 more seconds. Remember our rules. Okay. So one pre-correct for this when you're training this is it's always helpful, and I just didn't have the luxury today with you guys, to actually give them these two examples when they come into your fourth session so they actually get to practice doing the tests or the examples, okay, so that they're already familiar with what we're going to ask them to do. Now I'm just pulling this on you, but and so it takes you a while to read through the scenarios. But if you do that ahead of time, right when they come in, then of course when you go through the examples, it'll be a lot crisper than the way I'm doing it right now, okay? But let's look at Jordan for correcting and extinguish. Okay, remember our rules, prompt, the replacement, and of course don't let that problem here pay off. And we know that she's trying to get adult attention. So um, let's see. Peers earn wow cards for ignoring Jordan's negative behavior. No, if it was peer attention, it might work, right? Because we're actually not letting that problem here pay off. OK? Good. Whoops. Um, teacher talks with student about being respectful after she makes negative comments. No, it gets her exactly what she wants, right? Good. Uh, when student begins off-task behavior, give brief visual prompt to ask teacher for help. Yes. Great job. We, we prompted the replacement behavior. Okay. Um, ignore student's negative comments to avoid power struggle. Yes. It's a good option. Okay. When student makes negative comments, send her to the counselor. No. 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 Good. It sounds like you guys got these, right? When student begins off-task, give brief visual prompt, okay, and of course ignore the negative comments because kind of like how Eddie was, he was getting that response from the teacher every time in the video, right, and so he just kept on going. So we want to break that cycle, okay? Good. So we have about four more minutes. I'm going to walk through the last part, and I promise the smells that you have you, you'll get access to, okay? <laughs> um, let's look then at the last R of racer, okay? Reinforce the replacement and desired behaviors based on the function. This is the fun part. We want to come up with strategies to reinforce the student, right? On one, the replacement behaviors. So when they do ask for the break, boom, we're going to give them that break. Or if they ask for attention, we're going to give them that attention. And the desired behaviors, they're working their butts off based on where they're at. They're doing, they might be doing single digit addition, but they're working hard based on those accommodations. They're getting to the double digit. So you're going to make sure those pay off as well. Okay, but we have some rules to follow. When it comes to replacement behavior, okay, we want to make sure that we're quickly providing that to the student. And of course, it's based on the function. Okay, so when they ask for a break, don't say, here you go, you can have a soda, right? Give them the break or whatever it is. Um, if they ask for an easier task, make sure you give them that. When it comes to desired behavior, and this is a hard one that, that people have a hard time with. Department of Redundancy Department there, okay? So reinforce the desired behaviors. Um, or the approximations. The ultimate plan is that of that student to go past those reinforced replacement behaviors, and we're going to reinforce the progression. But we need to make sure that we're being, that our goals and expectations are reasonable. Okay? Don't just say, if you do this for 30 minutes straight, you get it. Right? We have to break that up. We need to be reasonable. Okay? Make sure our expectations are reasonable for the student. So on a daily basis, the student is out of seat and off task the entire period and has not turned in any work the entire term. Okay? So it's probably not reasonable for that student to be in his seat the whole class and turn in all of his assignments. Okay? We gotta get over that point. Okay? Uh, it's more reasonable to start small and build success. So you know what? Turn in 50% of your assignments and be on task and try to complete for 15 minutes each period. If you do that, boom. We're going to reinforce that, okay, in the beginning. Again, we're going to take steps forward. So we need to be reasonable with our goals and expectations, okay, and with our time frames. So it's probably not reasonable time frame uh, for reinforcement. If the student turns in all worksheets for one week, he will earn 15 minutes in the skate park on Fridays, okay? Do you guys have those out here, skate parks? It's a big Oregon thing. But um, 
uh, if the student is in seat and on task for the entire period, he will earn a candy bar. Again, it's just way too long setting, setting the student up. It's more reasonable time frame. If they complete five problems, he can choose three problems to cross off from the worksheet. Okay, doesn't that sound cool? If the student is on task for 10 minutes, he actually gets four minutes of computer time or whatever, again, is reinforcing to him or her. Make sense? Okay, so we need to be reasonable. And the last part, we need to make sure that it's valued by the student. Not to just give them the reinforcer because we have that in our closet, but the idea that it needs to be valuable. And of course, the way we know that is about the function. We already have that information. So we know that they're trying to get or avoid something. So that's what we're going to deliver. It needs to be valuable to them. So for example, if they're trying to avoid a difficult task, a reinforcer could be a free homework pass or something like that. Make sense? Good. All right, let's do these last two examples and I promise I'll let you eat lunch, okay? But let's do these last two examples. Um, Morgan, check two for when it comes to the reinforce section. You get two options. Remember our rules for replacement behaviors and desired behaviors, okay? Choose two. I'll put them up there for you. But you guys know them already anyway. about 20 more seconds to get your answers in. All right. So for Morgan, let the student choose a topic to write about after writing five sentences. No, remember the reasonable part, right? Good. Uh, student earns one minute of computer time for each sentence completed or when on task for five minutes. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Okay. What about um, student gets a break when asking appropriately? Okay. What about student gets extra recess time for finishing writing tasks all week? No, no. no, not realistic for her where she's at, right? And after writing five sentences, student gets to complete writing assignment in special seat. <laughs> what do you mean? I got like that really nice leather seat in the back of my room. No, right? Good. Does that make sense? We've applied these rules, right? Valuable, based on the function. Good, let's do the same thing for Jordan. And I promise you'll get lunch after this. That'll be your reward. <laughs> Unless you're really trying to avoid lunch, then I just messed you up, right? Remember, you get to choose two. Give you about seven and a half seconds. All right, you guys are good at this stuff already. Jordan, so teacher gives student frequent positive attention for on-task respectful behavior. Yes, good, because she wants adult attention. Student earns five minutes of free time with peer for being on task in class. Not valuable, right? She wants adult attention. Peers praise Jordan for on task behavior. Great, it's nice to have, but she could have cared less about that. She wants the adult attention, right? Let student work with teacher if respectfully asks. Yes, it's based on her replacing behavior. And of course, let student work with peer tutor if they respectfully ask. Nah. She could care less about them. We're cooler, right? All right, so those are the two that you should have gotten.